Oh my gosh! Ebola! The sky is falling! <laughs> I'm going to make a video to dispel some things about Ebola. Ebola is harder to catch than influenza. Below this video is more information. I put links to some preventative tools, uh, some things you may not know of, for instance, decontamination procedures. Okay, here's, here's an example. You've got your house all sealed up. You've got, there's an outbreak of Ebola or swine flu or bird flu or whatever it is going around your town you know, and it's deadly. Whatever it is is deadly. The plague, it doesn't matter what. Just for this, for this video, we'll call it Ebola. Okay, you're going to have to go out and do recon. So, in your recon, you're going to want to do, like, have a protective suit. The military makes an NBC suit with the charcoal and everything, which is really good. If you can afford it, if not, you may have to get one of those Tyvek suits that will protect you. And in worst case scenarios, a cheap rain suit will work. Okay, so you've gone to town, you've been around a bunch of dead bodies or people coughing and sneezing. Okay, now to go on this mission where people are coughing and sneezing, if you're poor and all you can afford is one of these, these will work. These will in decrease your risk of being contaminated by 90%, even 99%, unless the person that's sick is going <coughs> right in your face. You know, you get a pair of them, and I'm going to use these as an example for goggles. So you got this, and you got this. All right, you're wearing your gloves and your uh, what do you call those washing your hand gloves, those latex gloves, whatever. Uh, if you can't afford it, you know, get the save your hands dishwashing gloves. That's going to protect you 99%. Now, if you're stupid and you go handling these dead bodies and then you sit there and wipe your face with your gloves, this is the number one way to become infected by doing this right here. Doing this, scratching around, doing like that, after you've been around contamination and you haven't decontaminated. All right, so if you've got to go out on a recon, remember, I'm just using this as an uh, example. There are better, there are better stuff than this. Uh, you use this as protection to go out on your recon. Or even if uh, you know people are. Uh, still going to Walmart and stuff. Um, you know what? Don't be ashamed to wear something like this. This is far better than those little just regular masks. They have a smaller micron count. These are actually good enough for tear gas. Believe it or not, these will filter out tear gas. So you don't need great big expensive stuff. All you really need for tear gas is a pair of swim glasses to keep it out of your eyes and one of these can be had for under 50 bucks okay now there are better ones I'm leaving links below to the cheap stuff and the expensive stuff so you can have your choice cheap is better than nothing I don't care what you say this is better than nothing if they, people say, well, this won't do no good, why not just run around like this? Those people are idiots, all right? Anything is better than nothing. It's just like when you're playing cards. There are odds. Any coverage puts the odds in your favor. You know, it gives you a percentage of odds. It may only be 1%, but that 1% could save your life, all right? So, you know, this is basic stuff and that. So I'm also going with the transmission. I've got below a more detailed version of the Ebola stuff. Let me get this out, out of the way so I can read it. Um, 
get my notes over here to the side. Ebola. Okay, transmission of Ebola occurs through direct contact with an infected person or his or her body fluids. What is body fluids? Achoo! Did you ever see a slow motion picture of someone, somebody sneezes? That goes out. Now, if you're in the neighborhood when somebody goes, achoo! And one of those mucus snot wads, or as I like to call them, their cooties go flying out. And you get one of those cooties, microscopic cooties in your eye, up your nose, in your mouth, or even on your hand. You get it on your hand, and then, you know, a couple of seconds later, you do this right here. Yes, you can be infected. That's why some people are saying, well, is it airborne? No. And yes. Yes and no, okay? It's airborne versus the part where you sling your bodily fluids around the room. In that, in that case, a simple mask will work, all right? Uh, but if you get it on your hands and then stick your hands in your eyes or pick your nose and eat your booger or whatever else, yes, you can get infected that way. Number two, for you sodomites out there, yes, if you have sex with an, with an infected person, you will become infected. Uh, if you share needles, unclean needles, uh, you can get it. So there are different things. And the number one thing I hear that is a falsehood is that a person has to be showing symptoms before it's transmitted. Bull hockey. Once that person is infected, it is usually two, anywhere from two days to, let me read here, it's two, between two days and uh, context. Huh. Ah. Okay, after four to six days, symptoms of Ebola can begin. The period between transmission of the virus and the start of symptoms is called the incubation period. For Ebola, the incubation period can be as short as two days or as long as two days. That's incubating in your body before you show symptoms. Once it's in your body, within just a few hours, it's, it's already gone through your body. And at that time, when you sneeze on somebody, you can transmit it. So once you have become infected, even though you're not having symptoms, you are contagious. Even if a person exhibits no signs or symptoms of Ebola, he or she is, can still spread the virus during the incubation period. Once symptoms begin, the person can remain contagious for about three more weeks. So until you are completely out of it, you know, when, when your symptoms have stopped and you think you've survived, you still got to be in quarantine for at least three weeks after. Let's just call it a month. All right, so your family comes to visit you. They've been out amongst the world. The city is overrun with Ebola or any virus. If you wish to take them in, you're going to have to set up a tent at least 100 yards from your house, downwind preferably, and tell them they have to stay in that tent city for or tents or shack or whatever you got set up for at least a month. All right. Now, after they come out, First thing you want to do before you put them in the tent city is decontamination. They're going to have to strip off naked. You're going to have to get over your, oh, I don't want to be naked in front of you. Well, they're going to get naked. And I suggest you keep some of this shampoo on your hands. I know it says for veterinary use only. And this is not a daily shampoo. It's not exactly the best thing for your skin. 
but it is also not only is it antibacterial, it's antimicrobial and antifungal. See, your dial soap is pretty good against bacteria, but not fungus. So this is more like a surgical scrub. Uh, you'll want to have your relatives or whoever's coming over strip off naked. You're going to hose them down, and you're going to make sure they wash with this. That includes washing all their cracks, right? You're going to take their clothes and not touch them that they were wearing, and you're going to put them in a big drum or something and uh, fill it full of boiling or real hot water and laundry detergent and uh, probably a stronger bleach solution. Not so strong that you burn their clothes, but a lot stronger than what you drink. You'll wash them, put them in a detergent, then throw them in the rinse water that's heavily bleached and let it sit overnight. Just let it sit in the bleach solution, swash it up and down, move it to another solution of rinse, you know, rinse the bleach off, and then, you know, all this time you're doing this with gloves on, so you're not touching their contaminated clothes with your hands. Move it to another solution of iodine or betadine. Let it sit in that overnight. Then you can move it to the final rinse where you rinse all those chemicals out and hang it in the sunlight to dry. Okay? By that time, they have, you know, they've been already been in their decon unit for a week. You still don't want to give them their clothes back. They still want to be in smocks. Now, their smocks, when they take them off every couple of days to wash them, you will have to, uh, what do you call it, uh, decontaminate their clothing. So they'll be changing a set of clothes every other day. You'll treat their clothing as contaminated, and you'll do that for the whole time for a month, at which time they show no symptoms. They can come out get their old clothing back. But this stuff here, I've got links to this stuff. I've also got links to uh, this is what uh, mostly it's used for hand scrubs, but it's antibacterial, antifungal, antimicrobial. It is not something you want to use every day. Uh, it is something you can use like if you have to go out and you come back in your Tyvek suit and stuff and your rubber gloves, you can spray it all over the outside of your Tyvek suit. Let it sit for a few minutes to kill all the contaminants on your Tyvek before you rinse the Tyvek suit off, and then you can disrobe, and then at which time you would take a bath in this to get any residual off of you, and then, you know, rinse your clothes off, uh, take your clothing, uh, wash it, put it through a fairly strong bleach solution, not pure bleach, otherwise you'll ruin your clothes, but enough to decontaminate your clothes, rinse it real good, hang them up to dry. But I've got links to this stuff, I've got links to this stuff, which you would mix, you wouldn't use this pure. Uh, this is also antifungal, so... Uh, I mean, technically, this stuff here is real good if you get a get a hat or something, and uh, you've washed your hat and cleaned it. You can actually spray it on the inside rim of your hat and leave it out to dry. Personally, I use colloidal silver. Every time I wash my hat or something, I will spray and saturate the inside sweatband with colloidal silver and then leave it to dry. That, in effect, impregnates the... Uh, the whole sweat, sweatband with uh, the cloth fibers have a silver, have silver in it, which prevents it from getting all funky and stinky and stuff. Also works on the socks and my get home bed. So I have links in the more info section to all these items. Uh, let me make sure I've covered it all. Chlorohexidine, which is the stuff here. I've got it by the gallon. Might as well get a gallon because you're going to wind up using it. Uh, a shallow tub, you know, when you walk into a place, uh, you want a strong bleach solution in the bottom of the tub to hit your shoe soles, decontaminate whatever you've been walking through. Uh, I've got the links to uh, 
This stuff, which is a shampoo, body wash, do not use this unless it's an emergency. This is not, this is, it's for veterinary use only, and it's only to be used when decontaminating on people. Unless you've got an animal that has the mange and, or a horse that has ringworms. It could be used on a person that has ringworms, stuff like that. And so can this. you got ringworm. There's your cure. Um, let's see what else have I got on here. I got colloidal silver, which is cheaper for you to make yourself. I mean, if you want me to make it, it's going to be expensive. Uh, you have to have a light tight container. I can the smallest amounts I can make is a half a gallon. So a half gallon of colloidal silver. I'm gonna have to paint a jug to keep the light out and everything. Uh, you're probably talking about fifty bucks or more for me to make it. If you make it yourself, you can do it for less. Uh, nitrile gloves, you know, the throwaway disposable gloves. I got links to that below. Bio suits, the Tyvek bio suits, not the military ones. I've also got the good gas masks, you know, the good filters, you know, that use the 40 millimeter uh, gas mask. I put them, I particularly like the masks that have the full vision, uh, you know, that you can see all around with. And it takes the 40 millimeter NBC filters. I put links to all that below. I also put a link to the cheap gas mask, you know, the $15 jobby. Um, also, some uh, goggles. Uh, I think they're made by DeWalt. They're only about 10 bucks. You take one of those goggles and one of these, and you're covered for 90% of the stuff, unless you're walking through. Uh, a tear gas barrage where it's nothing but tear gas and you're going to stick around for uh, an hour or two that's pretty good but if you're just you know in a tear gas barrage and you're leaving the goggles and one of these would be pretty good I don't recommend sticking around if you want to stick around get the good stuff um, and uh, let's see that's pretty much it so I have links to all that stuff below uh, as far as decontamination, all like that. Uh, you'll want to have a place outside your home to set up, uh, preferably a place that will keep the wind off of you if it's cold weather. And you can have some hot water out there, you know, mix the hot water uh, and or at least warm water where somebody can decontaminate away from the living quarters and then you move them into the living quarters <sighs> anything else nope, that's it for this video I'm already nearly 20 minutes so I'm gonna shut up now and if I think of anything else I'll make another video